you're welcome in Movie Recap. Vikings Series, the first season. This farmer, Ragnar, is bringing his son to the celebration where he will take the manhood bracelet. Good times for Ragnar and daughter. Ragnar goes to Rolo's brothers and tells them he does not want to conquer the East like every year and he wants to conquer the West. I believe there's a way to go West. I've heard a lot of stories. It is full of treasures. At the ceremony, Ragnar asked the king where he would sail this summer and told them that they would sail East again. Ragnar tells him and tells everyone present that they must go to the west and that there are many treasures and the king says that all the ships are his own and he is the king and he is the one who says where to go. All this belongs to me. Ragnar, he goes to the fortune teller and tells him about his future and says that his future will be very great. In the morning, Ragnar goes to his friend Floki, a boat maker, and asks him to build him a boat and to keep it a secret. Ragnar and Rolo talk about finding people to sail with. And really, Ragnar gathers the people and tells them that he wants to sail to the west, that there are many treasures waiting for them, that he will divide them among them, and that the west is not just a fairy tale. The king's assistant sees them and goes to tell the king. Ragnar goes to say goodbye to his wife and children, and he goes on the ship, and their journey begins, and at night, the waves are high, rain and lightning, and they will think that the god Thor is celebrating them. In the morning, those on the boat with Ragnar feel lost and see no land, and begin to question Ragnar's words. And they fly with the crows that are with them. If they are in a nearby land, the crows will return, and if not, they are over. After a long time, they see the beach and celebrate. These are the lands of England in the west, and they pray to church when Christians see them running and hiding in church. And the church bells chime. Ragnar and his men break the door and enter and go to them and kill them. Ragnar sees a monk among them and speaks their language and the name Athelstan. Ragnar stops them from killing this monk and tells his men that he will make him a slave. He tells them to collect all the treasures, and they come again and take everything and go to the king, and the king says that all these treasures are mine and take them. That all this belongs to me. Because I am a generous king, I'll leave to everyone just one thing. Ragnar chose to take Athelstan. Ragnar chose him because he may be useful in the future in the lands of the West in the future. At night, Ragnar asks Athelstan about England and learns that it has four kingdoms and four kings. And they go to the king and say that you know many things about the West and that there are many treasures. And he asks him to sail again to the West and the king agrees, provided that he takes with him the guard named Nut and he agrees. Ragnar agrees, and they go. King Nut tells that he must know how Ragnar goes to the West. On the second day they prepare to travel and this time Ragnar takes his wife with him. And we find out that she is a strong fighter. They come to a land in the west, they find soldiers. The war is going on between them, Ragnar and his soldiers. They kill them, one of them escapes, and he tells the king that the northerners have reached his land. They killed his soldiers. Ragnar arrives at the city, but orders them to wait and not start the attack. Suddenly they hear church bells. Ragnar shouts, attacks, and they really do go in and get all the treasures. The guard nut enters one of the houses and wants to attack one of them. Ragnar's wife sees him and tries to stop him. He hits her and she kills her. He returned to their land and asked King Ragnar about Nut. Ragnar tells him, he tried to assault my wife and killed him. The king could not believe it and ordered his imprisonment. They set up a court and the king sentences Ragnar to death and his wife says it was she who killed Nut, not Ragnar. And the king doesn't think the woman can kill Nut. And the king says he will ask for the testimony of Rollo, Ragnar's brother. The king summoned Rollo before his court appearance and gave him many treasures. He told him that he would marry him to his daughter in return for his betrayal of his brothers and his testimony against him. Back in court, Rollo says he saw his brother kill Nut, but did so because Nut wanted to assault his wife. He gave his brother freedom. The king goes to the fortune -ettler and asks him about his future. Says the fortune -ettler, someone will kill him, and the king will be in your place. And the king understands that this person is Ragnar. The king gathers his soldiers and attacks the village. He chases Ragnar into the forest, he and Athelstan, and we see that Ragnar treats him well not like slaves, and that they have become friends. Suddenly, the villagers shout and Ragnar runs to save his family, and the king's assistant hits him in the back with an arrow. But Ragnar manages to reach his family, flee with Ethelestan. Ragnar is injured and the king says he will kill him, but Ragnar manages to escape from them and jumps from the top of the algebra into the water and catches up with Athelstan. And they went to Floki's house. Meanwhile, the king caught Ragnar's brother and tortured him. To talk about Ragnar's place, Ragnar knows what happened with his brother. He asks Floki to go to the king and asks them to fight. 
Floki goes to the king and says Ragnar will challenge him to a fight if he refuses. Shame, it will haunt him all his life. And the king agrees. On that day, Ragnar arrived injured. The fight begins between them, swords break, and they fight with axes. Ragnar was wounded more than once but he can hit the king with a strong blow. And the king falls and the people kneel Ragnar is the new king. Hell, oh Ragnar! Ragnar orders a large funeral for the king. After winter is over, Ragnar tells them they are going to the west. They reach the west and set up camp in the land of King Ale. And at night they go to King Ale's soldiers' camp and burn and chain the soldiers, among whom is Lord Ethelwolf, King Ale's brother. He took him to negotiate with the King Ale invites them to eat after learning that Lord Ethelwolf is with them. He is his favorite brother. Ragnar says he wants 909 kilos of gold and silver in exchange for leaving and returning Lord Ethelwolf. King Ale agrees, but only on the condition that one of them becomes a Christian. Rollo gets up and tells them he agrees. They took Rollo to perform a ritual to enter Christianity. King Ale sends the gold chest to Camp Ragnar. But when they open the chest, it's empty. King Ale's soldiers attack them. A great battle is taking place, and the Vikings are brutally killing the soldiers and they are killing all the soldiers of Ale. Ragnar responds to King Ale that he kills Lord Ethelwolf's brothers and sends him to the castle, dragging behind a horse. Ragnar and all the Vikings besiege the castle. The king swears to kill Ragnar, but he has no other choice. Bring them the gold they asked for, and they took and went. And on the second day of King Horik's arrival, he arrived and Ragnar offered him to unite, saying that he needed many men and boats and that he wanted to sail to the lands in the west stronger than England, and that's why I need him, because he will get all the treasures there. King Horik agrees, but on the condition that Ragnar first helps him make a truce with King Jaw. Ragnar agrees that he will fix them and put an end to their differences. The next day they went to King Jarl, and Ragnar told him. He came to make peace, and when he learned that Ragnar was going to the west, he heard from him. Then he responded by agreeing to peace on the condition that King Horik returns to him the land he took from him and suggests to Ragnar I see the land first and that they leave one of them until he returns as security. And the travel period will be three days, and Ragnar besip Rollo. And walking, Jarl talks to Rollo about his brother Ragnar. He says he is great and famous and you are not. Nobody knows anything about you. He's trying to make him turn against his brothers. And the next day with Ragnar on his journey to Earth, two of Ragnar's soldiers saw a woman bathing and stood and watched. Until the guards saw them and when they learned they were Ragnar men. The appearance of the woman who was bathing. She introduced herself as a slog. She told them, Ragnar should apologize to me for what I did. And they come back and tell Ragnar and he tells them you're watching and I apologize. But when Ragnar sees her and that she is beautiful, he apologizes to her and Ragnar takes her with him on his journey. In the Kattegat of Ragnar's wife, Ladratha, an epidemic spreads and many people become infected and die, including Ragnar's daughter. And when the Ragnar reaches the ground, it happens between Ragnar and Aslog, and on the second day she says she is pregnant. They return to King Jaw, and Floki says that King Horik refused to return the land to him, and that Ragnar would leave him and his men in the morning. King Jarl goes to Rollo and tells him that he must fight and take back his land and that he wants to fight with him against King Horik and his brother Ragnar and tells him that he will make a king in the new kingdom. Rollo agrees. I will fight with you against my brother. Ragnar became king of the Vikings in the north. Time passes and the events of the third season begin. Ragnar goes to Wessex. Lajida makes this man named Kaffir place in power and goes to Lee Wessex with Ragnar. Once she's gone, he turns against her and becomes the king. All hail El Kalf! They and Wissex arrived in order to obtain the land promised to them by King Ekbert. But Akbart says people are not satisfied with giving you land. He asks her to fight with Princess Kontharath because she lost the war. This way you will improve your image before the princes, agrees Ragnar. Lajatha prefers to stay in Wessex to build the colony, and Kattegat stays with Lajatha to translate for her. Ragnar arrives in Mercia and finds the princess's uncle's soldiers. Her brother's soldiers are on the left on the beach. They shoot arrows. Ragnar watches the battlefield. He finds that there is no way to connect the two armies, so he attacks her uncle's army first, because there are fewer, and wins them, and the princess's brother escapes. Princess Quenthrith asks Ragnar to bring her uncle's head. I want his head. In Kattegat, Ragnar's wife, Floki's wife and Rolo's girlfriend, they see one dream about someone in a dream. Both of you, we have all dreamed the same dream. In the colony, Ladratha knows. The colony has original inhabitants, but the king expelled them from it, and if they return, King Akbart will defend them. At Ragnar, they are looking for the brother of Princess Kuntrith. The princess asks Ragnar not to kill her brother. So 
burn my brother. Floki gets angry and doesn't like what he sees, doesn't want to fight for the Christians. There is a sick person. He decides to cut. I want you to cut off my arm. The news reaches Ragnar about the princess's brother over the mountains waiting for supplies. Ragnar, Vikings and the rest of the army go. The injured person decides to go up and fight first. Follow Ragnar and the rest of the army and start the fight. Bjorn's friend is injured and rescued before she dies, and Ragnar sees the army protecting the prince. Akbart's son, Ethel Wolf, appears and shoots arrows at them, and Ragnar asks them to kill the princess's brother. They return to the camp and Ragnar discovers from Bjorn that his girlfriend is pregnant, angering Ragnar, and a slap in the face. He says, how did you bring her with you to battle while she is pregnant? This is not what men do. And he says that what happens is because of you. He I can't believe you are my son. He follows Prince Ragnar and says that his uncle was controlling him. He asks forgiveness from Ragnar. Ragnar hits him and he says I forgive you. I forgive you. And Floki talks to Rollo and says that Ragnar loves Christianity and that he has lost his faith. And Rollo say that this is just a trick and say this is the future and we can't fight all people. Floki says to him, you minds are poisoned and he is walking. This is the future. We cannot fight everyone. I can see that you have all drunk from the poison chalice. And the joke, Rolo, is on you. Okay. In Kattegat, the person who appeared in the dream of the three women appears. Ragnar's little sick son cries all the time in pain. And the strange man can silence him. He says that he will get part of the child's pain for himself. And they think it's God. Suddenly Ragnar's wife and the strange man. She leaves her children at home alone, and they go out walking on a frozen lake and fall into the frozen lakes. And Rolo's girlfriend follows them, but fall into the frozen lake and die. When Ragnar returns to Wessex, he treats Bjorn's girlfriend, but her injury is severe and she tells him you can't marry me while I look like this. Ragnar knows they started farming in the colony. Princess Mercia celebrates her brother and says she is forgiving and gives him a drink. And he died instantly. He was poisoned. She looks at the audience, tells them, and raises her glass. The health of Queen Mercia. They look at each other and throw cups on the ground. Cav, sent to summon Erlendur, son of King Horik, to ally with him against Ragnar and Lajertha. On their way to Kattegat, Ragnar asks Athelstan about Paris that he knows is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, and it becomes Ragnar's dream. It is the invasion of Paris. Floki is jealous of Athelstan and I think he is poisoning Ragnar's mind. Arrive Kattegat. They know what happened. Rolo's wife dies and Ragnar learns that his wife has betrayed him. Someone drives to Kattegat and Lanjertha learns that Kalf has taken her throne. Ragnar tells her to talk to him first because we won't lose any soldiers. Ragnar has in his mind that he is invading Paris and wants to gather the largest army. Ragnar goes to the fortune teller and says to him, Do you think I will succeed in conquering Paris or not? He answers, I will see you invade Bryce, but the one who will invade it is a dead man not alive. He goes to everyone and tells them that he has decided that they will invade Paris. They go to Kalf. Ragnar offers him the alliance and that they invade Paris, otherwise he will kill him and he agrees. And in Wessex, someone from the colony goes to King Akbart and tells him. He says they were attacked in the colony and the king says, for his son in front of everyone to go and defend the colony. As entrusted to the Vikings, Akbar's son goes and kills all the Vikings in the colony, even the babies. And it goes back to King Akbart. The king is very angry, and they by his son veto the treaty. Between him and Ragnar, he ordered the guards to arrest anyone who helped his son and kill the Vikings. But it turns out that the king is in agreement with son and to be able to eliminate the Vikings and those exposed to him in the kingdom. Akbar's son, Ethel Wolf, knows from his wife that she is pregnant and tells her how. And I was in wars. He beats her because it's treason. And after her birth, and because she did not want to admit who the boy's father was, they took her and tied her in front of people, and the rules of the church are to cut off her ear, so that everyone knows that it is treason. They cut off her right ear and before they cut her left, she tells them that the boy's father is Athelstan, and King Akbart decides to pardon her because he loves Athelstan. And with Ragnar, Athelstan says that Paris is on an island, and it has very high walls, and it has only one entrance, and it is very difficult for you to enter. Someone arrives from the colony who managed to escape and tells Ragnar and Floki what happened. And Floki says that it is all because of Athelstan and that you are listening to him. Ragnar says Athelstan is not guilty and kills the man so that no one can talk about what happened in the colony because he wants to conquer Paris. Athelstan gets rid of all doubt and returns to Christ and gets rid of the Viking bracelet. And Floki sees it 
and he hates him more and goes to tell everyone what they saw and that he threw the bracelet and people hated him. Athelstan goes to Ragnar and tells him that he has got rid of all doubts and that he is a Christian and he will not be able to stay here. Ragnar, because he loves him, takes him on a journey and asks him to stay with him and he will protect him. And they went to this man who is a traveler who travels from one country to another and also speaks the language of Paris. At night Floki goes to Athelstan and kills him. Ragnar carried him and buried him on the highest mountain and was very sad about his death and kept talking to him. Forgive me, my friend, not for what I did, but for what I will do. He wears the cross of Athelstan. This is where Ragnar changed forever. Forgive me, my friend, not for what I have done, but for what I'm about to do. They will arrive in Paris. They make camp near Paris. Ragnar tells Floki that he misses Athelstan and that if he was here he would have helped us with the plan. Floki gets angry at Ragnar's words and that he did this for God. So Ragnar makes him the leader and tells him to come up with a plan. Floki says he can build a large staircase to climb over the Paris wall. Ragnar did this to make Floki question the god and that killing Athelstan was wrong. Floki builds towers, and we go to Wessex. The king receives news that the princess of Marseille Canthrith betrayed him and killed the king's men. He sends his son and arrives in Mercia, and learns that the princess gave birth to a son, this boy, his father being Ragnar the Great. She orders the murder of Ethelwolf, but he convinces her that if she kills him, there will be reason to attack his father and become king of Wessex and Mercia. We go to Ragnar all ships equipped with towers and ladders, Lajertha and another group attacking from the side of the gate to break it. And in Paris, all the citizens are hiding and the armies are preparing. Lajertha and those with her go to the gate carrying a large shield and try to break the gate. But they couldn't. They brought two big arrows into the door and pulled the door with horses. Ragnar and the ships reach the wall and set up the towers. They go up the stairs to hit and fall and many of Ragnar's army die and he throws oil on them to set them on fire. Ragnar is shocked that the gods have abandoned him. The daughter of the king of Paris goes to take an old flag for a clergyman and goes to support her army. Ragnar sees Bjorn and Rollo going up the stairs. He ran to them and went up and killed many soldiers, but Rollo and Bjorn fall off the bridge. And Ragnar knows he's finished and looks at Paris and falls off the wall. And we go to Lajertha. They can open the door and find a long and empty corridor. They run into the city and find iron arrows and withdraw. Lose the war. Ragnar goes to sit alone and talks to Ethelstein and tells him that he was patient with Floki. But he has a plan. That Paris is as beautiful as they told her and that he will conquer her. Rollo says they got close to them and next time they will succeed. Floki feels that the gods have abandoned him. And at night they try again. But Ragnar doesn't go because he's too tired. Lajertha goes and kills the guards at the gate. The guards ring bells to alert the soldiers of the Viking attack. Lajertha burns the gate, and this is the signal for Rollo to attack. Rollo and the rest of the Vikings enter, but they see an iron cylinder with thorns running towards them and killing many of them. But Rollo runs over her, jumps on her, stops her, attacks her, and encourages others to attack her. But the commander of the Paris army closed the gate and the Vikings withdrew and imprisoned Rollo and those with him. But this man and the traveler do not catch up and become prisoners of the Paris armies. But the king decided killed the other man. During the execution, he said, I want someone to hold his hair until it becomes one blow and die. And before he is struck, he pulls his head and cuts off the man's hand and laughs. And the king of Paris decides that he will send soldiers and an interpreter to translate for them to find a solution and stop the attack and that if they continue to attack them, they will invade Paris. Bjorn says they have lost 1,000 men and winter is approaching and they must go. Ragnar, shout at them. It tells them that many mistakes are caused by the opinions and actions of others. But I am the king and that all their plans have failed and that I am the one who will rule. He decided to meet them tomorrow. In the morning, Ragnar goes to meet the commander of the Paris army by himself and takes the traveler to translate for him. They offer him gold and silver and tell him that it is better that they agree because there are armies on the way to help Paris. Ragnar says the offer is little, I know. Nobody is coming to you. He says I'm about to die. I want one request to enter Christianity to be with a Christian friend. He says fine, I will prepare religious rituals for you. He shouts and says all we need is water and water around us. He says I want this to happen now. They start in Rolla, Lajertha and Floki come to see what's going on. He brings them the gold and silver they agreed upon and asks them to walk. But Ragnar is dying and he is very sick. And the whole army knows what Ragnar did and they say he can't rule them because he became a Christian. Ragnar brings Bjorn and tells him that I will ask you for a request because you are the only one I trust now. A month passed and the Vikings did not leave. 
The army chief comes to them and Bjorn tells him that Ragnar is sick and dying and comes to see him. Ragnar asked him that if he died, he would be buried in the Christian way. The army commander agrees, but on condition that they bring the body to the church and take it by men without weapons, and the rest are waiting outside the wall. Ragnar died. They put him in a coffin and carried him and entered the church inside the coffin, and the funeral procession began. Suddenly, Ragnar comes out of the coffin and kills someone and catches the princess. He goes out to the gate and opens the door. Bjorn gives the order for the army to attack. Ragnar lets the princess go. He gets out and can hardly stand up. Thus, the prophecy of the clairvoyant will be fulfilled, and the person who will conquer Paris will be a dead man from the living. They will enter and take treasures and walk because there is not enough army to occupy Paris. But they agreed that they would return again in the spring and agreed to leave a part of them led by Rollo and Beamshot. Because Ragnar is very ill, and the king of Paris sent a messenger to Rollo and offered him to be king and to be the princess's husband only in exchange for a fight with Paris against Ragnar's brothers. As usual, Rollo agrees, and the third season of the Vikings series ends. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a nice comment like you after they reach Kattegat. And Ragnar is still sick. Bjorn enters with the treasures they took from Paris, and Ragnar's wife sitting on the king's chair. And we see her go to the fortune editor. Is it possible to be the queen of Kattegat? He says it is possible. And Floki goes to Ragnar to perform a ritual to heal Ragnar. Bjorn tells people that they have succeeded in entering Paris. He tells them that his father told him that they succeeded thanks to Athelstan and he is condemning Floki for killing Athelstan. Lanjertha and Kalf return to her village and Kalf tells the people that they will rule together. And this man objects. He tells Kalf that he and his family did not agree. The next day, Kalf gathers people and tells them, I found that some people did not agree with my decision. Then I and Lanjertha should rule together. For this reason, those who disagree must put their weapons to the wood. And all opponents are out. And Kalf orders them to be killed. In Katget, Ragnar rises and returns to his throne again and sees Floki bound in the square and knows that Bjorn has ruled before the people. And Ragnar says to Bjorn, If I wanted to arrest him, I would have arrested him a long time ago. But now you put us in an irreversible decision, and now I must punish my friend. Ragnar Bjorn asks, who made the decision that the one waiting in Paris is Rollo? Bjorn says I am. He responds, stupid decision again. Bjorn, he is my uncle, in Ragnar, and he is my brother too, and I know him better than you. The next day, Bjorn tells Ragnar that I will go out to the forest alone, and that there is a little house in the middle of the forest. I will go to him to test my manhood. And Ragnar tells him why. We are in the winter and you may not be able to survive. And Bjorn says I'll do this because you're not sure I'll live. And says prove me wrong. And Bjorn goes. Floki's wife goes and brings him food. Floki asks her to help him escape. But she refuses because she is afraid they will kill her. In Paris, the king makes his daughter, the beautiful princess, marry Rollo. She doesn't like him and they can't talk because of the different languages. News reaches Rollo that half of his men do not agree with what he has done and are going to fight him. Because he became a Christian. Rollo goes to them and kills them all. Is coming. The next day Floki ran away, and the guards went out looking for him with Ragnar's sons. Ragnar goes to Floki's wife and learns that she helped him escape, but he appreciates her love for her husband and leaves her unpunished. He gives her new clothes for the winter. The soldiers grab Floki and take him to Ragnar. Ragnar tells him why the gods didn't save you, didn't you kill Athelstan for them. Ragnar wants him to understand that he killed Athelstan out of jealousy, not the gods. But Floki doesn't answer. He says you made me suffer and now I will make you suffer. They tied him inside a mountain and water fell on him so that he would not sleep. Floki, you made me suffer. And now I shall make you suffer. And I've got such a wonderful punishment for you. In Wessex, King Ekbert learns that the people of Mercia do not like what the Queen of Mercia has done to her brother. And they imprison her and her son. King Ekbert sends his son Ethelwolf to rescue her. When he arrives in Mercia, when the guards see him, they order the killing of the princess and her son. But Ethelwolf, the son of Ekbert, killed the guards and managed to save the princess and her son at the last moment. Ragnar goes to Floki's wife and finds her digging a grave for her daughter because she died and helps her dig. Rollo helps the chief of the guard in Paris and sets up a new insurance plan for them, building towers on both sides of the river connected by chains. Once Ragnar's boats arrive, they lift the chains and kill them with arrows. And the son of King Horik, his name is Erlendur, 
He knows that Bjorn is alone in the woods. They bring an assassin and give him money to kill Bjorn, to take revenge on Ragnar for killing his father. Erlinger is given his father's ring for his protection, and no one suspects him. Bjorn will be testing his manhood at this time. He fights a bear and manages to kill him, but he gets injured and tries to treat the wound. Bjorn will be much stronger than before. Rolo, trying to explain to them that he wants to learn French. Ragnar goes to Floki and asks his wife, Didn't you tell Floki? And Floki realizes that his daughter is dead. And he screams. In the next day, Ragnar imagines Ethelstan. And he tells him, Mercy. And he goes to Floki. He finds his wife Floki holding a dish to collect water so Floki can sleep. And Ragnar frees him and goes. In Wessex the king's son arrives. Ethelwolf and Princess Mercia Cunthrith thank the king introducing her son to him and telling him that this is her son by Ragnar. Rolo, his wife, the princess, is preparing for the divorce party from him, but she is surprised that he learned their language for her sake, and he takes off his bracelet and says that it is very important to him, but he does not want it yet because, for her, and invalidate the divorce. And when Bjorn feels the presence of someone following him and the hired killer appears, but he stabs him and hits him with hunting tools and ties him to the tree and sees the ring in his hand and takes it from him, and kills him. Ragnar finds this maid and learns that his wife bought her. He learns that she is from Paris and that the Vikings attacked their ship, taking her with them. And Ragnar gives her freedom and takes her to a remote house that he owns, and make him a mixture of herbs and tell him that it is a medicine. Ragnar enters a hallucination, passing time and becoming addicted to it. Bjorn reaches his mother, Lajertha, and tells no one what happened to him. He goes to Erlendir's wife. He tells her that her husband treats her like a slave and offers to go with him, and she agrees. Bjorn did this because he knew he was the owner of the ring, but he had no proof. A few days later a king named Harald arrives in Kattegat and wants to join Ragnar in attacking Paris while they all prepare for war. Ragnar goes to the maid and asks her to make him more of this drug, and he still thinks it's medicine. In Kattegat they prepare to join Ragnar. Bjorn shows the ring to Erlendir's wife. She told him that she knew this ring belonged to King Erlendir. At the same time Lajertha kills the calf. In Kattegat, Everyone celebrates, but Ragnar leaves them and goes to the maid and tells her that his friend Athelstan has died and that he is very old and tells her about Paris. He tells her about the Wessex colony and that King Ekbert killed them. Ragnar's wife takes Hiver the bonuses to Floki so that Floki can teach him about religion. And he goes out to play with the children and gets angry and kills one of the children and he will be a very violent child. Ragnar goes to the fortune teller and asks him when will he die. He says you will die when the blind see you. Ragnar returns to them and tells them that they are finally going to Paris. He gives his children the bracelet of manhood and tells them that they will go with him because he is not reassured to find them with a slog. And he goes to the maid and asks her to bring him a quantity of medicine. She tells him that she will not do anything unless she comes with him. And Ragnar agrees because he has become addicted. In Wessex, King Akbert decided to send Athelstan's son, Alfred, on a pilgrimage. And Ethelwolf goes with him. At Kattegat. All the armies are preparing and heading for Paris. Floki will be with King Harald because he is angry with Ragnar. They reach a village before Paris, kill the soldiers, arrest one of the soldiers, tie him up and send him out to see his proof of their presence. Until Rollo reaches Paris, he will be equipped with many ships and fight his brothers at sea. Ragnar learns from Lajertha that she is pregnant and tells her that you should not have come. And she told him that she had learned from the soothsayer that he was going to die. King Ekbert goes to meet one of the princes who has rebelled against Princess Mercia Cunthrith and tells him that he wants to get rid of the princess. In return, he cedes the King of Mercia to King Ekbert and becomes King of Wessex and Mercia. King Ekbert agrees. The next day, Ragnar moves by ship to reach the place of the camp they were making and Bjorn tells him that there is no trace of the camp. He says you are really surprised. They will arrive in Paris and find Rollo standing with impunity, dressed in royal clothes. And Ragnar wakes Bjorn up and says your uncle is here. And at camp he told them that Rollo had built two towers and that they would sail and protect themselves with shields. And that he would allow Lajertha and a group of others to attack the towers from the land. And they begin to implement the plan and the ships are heading towards the towers. And Lajertha and those with her on the ground move toward the tower upon which Rollo was. But they are stuck in the mud in Rollo. He sees them and shoots arrows at them. And Rollo, they shot his arrows at Ragnar, but they hid themselves in shields. They continued sailing. Rollo gives them a signal for the second tower and pulls the chain. Connection between the two water towers. The ship carrying Floki and King Harold capsizes and sinks. On Lajertha's side, Rollo sends soldiers to fight them, and their number is large, and Lajertha and those with her withdraw. 
On Ragnar's side, he saw the sinking ships and his soldiers slaying in the water. He gets shocked and sees Floki in the water, and he was dying, and he goes down to the water to save him. And Ragnar came out and yelled at his brother Rolo. He said I saved you when everyone wanted you dead. When everyone wanted you dead, I kept you alive! They all withdraw and head back to camp. However, they find the camp on fire and Floki's wife burned, and Ragnar can find his children alive. Bjorn asked Ragnar what they were going to do, and if they stayed, they could attack them again. Ragnar says they have withdrawn. King Harold withdraws, saying that the stories he hears about King Ragnar are definitely not true and that he was defeated and withdrew easily. Ragnar suddenly tells them that they are camping here and all of them are surprised because it is a place in the mountains and there are no trees or anything. And he shall order them to remove the boats and lift them up the mountain and lower them to the other side. And in this way they shall pass the towers of Rolo and we shall not withdraw. And each of them will evacuate the ships. Ragnar looks at Floki and says you can do it. Floki says, I can do that for you. And they started with Ragnar's plan. Floki builds boat winches and lifts them up the mountain. Ragnar goes to the maid and tells her I want medicine and she says there is not much left and he tells her that this medicine is the only thing that made me bring you with me and threatens to kill her. And she told him that she would tell the rest of the people what happened in Wessex colony. Ragnar drowned her, killed her, and took what was left of her medicine. And his children see him. And on the other hand, King Eckbert returns to Wessex after all the princes abdicate the King of Mercia. He tells the princess that he has become King of Wessex and Mercia, and expels her. And at night you go to Eckbert, and try to kill him. But his son's wife kills her to save him. And she tells her when she dies that you killed two people, and that she is pregnant. Eckbert is appointed the official king of Mercia and Wessex, and King Ayla tells him that we are allies and that you were supposed to tell me and take Mercia together. And Eckbert says we are not equal now. Lajitha has lost her son and Ragnar consoles her. Erlendir goes to Bjorn's wife and tells her to kill him. If she didn't, her son would be killed. And she took her bow and went to Bjorn, but she turned and killed Erlendir. On the other side, and they could finally get the other ships off the mountain. Ragnar is very ill and has hallucinations due to a lack of medicine, and Bjorn says he will not enter Paris without him. Ragnar says I didn't come here for Paris, but for Rolo, and they went to find Ragnar waiting for them with a large army. Ragnar and those with him attack Rolo's ships and kill those on board. Bjorn grabs the bow and strikes right next to Rolo's head. Rolo's soldiers suggest he withdraw so they can regroup and Rolo tells them they will attack until they kill Ragnar. And the battle begins and the two armies join. Ragnar goes to Rolo and they continue to fight among themselves and Lajitha gets injured and Bjorn catches up with her and Floki gets injured. Rolo grabs his weapon and runs on Ragnar, but Ragnar's followers force him to withdraw by force. Rolo is injured. Ragnar is badly wounded. He cannot accept what happened and defeats him, and Ragnar disappears for many years. After Ragnar's defeat from his brother Rolo, Ragnar disappears for years and someone arrives in Kattegat. He tells Bjorn that he was close to Wessex and learns from someone there that he says he is Ragnar's son. And tell him what happened in the settlement of Wessex. Ragnar's wife says they don't know anything about Ragnar and that he's gone after the war. Bjorn goes to tell his brothers about the settlement. He gets angry because Ragnar knew what happened and didn't tell him. Bjorn goes to Floki to ask him and finds that he knows, but Ragnar tells him not to tell anyone. Bjorn asks him to make boats for him. He tells him that he has taken a map from Paris to the Middle East and that he wants to sail there and Floki says he will go with him. Ragnar reappears and returns to Kattegat and the people are surprised by his return and see that he has abandoned them and is on the run. Ragnar stands up and screams and tell them that you have the right to hate me but after the war, no one supported me. And he took out his sword and said whoever wants to kill me will be the king. Ragnar's children appear. Oba approaches him and hugs him. On the other side, after the war, Rollo is celebrated by the king of Paris and its people and makes King Rollo Caesar of Paris. Ragnar's sons ask him why he came back and he tells them that he came back to see what his sons did. And the invasion of England. Bjorn showed the map he had and told him that he was going to the Middle East and that Floki was preparing boats for him. Ragnar goes to Floki and sees the boats he made. Ragnar says, Now you make a deal with my son. He says he wants to go to Wessex. Floki said, we should have gone a long time ago, and told him that he could not go with him, and that he had promised Bjorn that he would sail with him. And Ragnar says I feel I will never see you again and take care of my family and go away. With Ragnar's sons, 
They will be in the jungle, and we will see that Ivar fights violently against his brothers and although he cannot stand but still he can compete with them and beat them as well. And we return to Ragnar, and he goes to Lajatha and suggests that she come with him, and she refuses because she is angry about what happened in the settlement, and that Ragnar knew and kept silent, and that she was the one who established this settlement. She said, that you were king and abdicated your responsibilities and your people. He tells her that he has made many wrong decisions and asks her to forgive him and that he wishes he hadn't left her in the past and stayed a farmer and gone away. On his way, he finds a tree and ties a rope to hang himself, but the rope breaks and he falls. He is frustrated and desperate, and that everyone refused to go with him. He returns to the Kattegat to find Ivar waiting. Surprisingly, he is the only one who agrees to go with him to Wessex. The next day, Ragnar goes to Bjorn and tries to convince him to go with him, but Bjorn refuses. But he says he will leave him boats. And at night, Lajith arrives at Kattegat to see her son before he leaves. Ragnar's wife, a slog, speaks arrogantly to her and tells her that she is the king of Kattegat. Lajitha does not like this talk, and she walks away. She says that she is more deserving of Kattegat, and that she stole her husband and Kattegat from her. Bjorn and Floki prepare with the army and boats as they go east. Ragnar is trying to get people into his army, but Bjorn will take all the mighty warriors. And the rest of the people are upset with Ragnar, and that he abandoned them and their relatives in the colony died because they trusted him. Ragnar and Ivar go to take his burial treasure and distribute it to the people so that they agree to go with him. But they are old and not warriors. Ragnar and Ivar prepare three boats to go to Wessex. A slog dreams that there is a storm and Ragnar and Ivar die at sea. A storm really does happen, but Ragnar save Ivar. In the morning, they find themselves on the beach, and with them a few people and the rest drowned and the ships were destroyed. And the people who survived told Ragnar that he had caused them trouble and that they would die because of him. They climb the mountain so that the soldiers do not see them. But the soldiers see the wrecks and know that they are from the north. And we will see King Ekbert and know that Ragnar has returned. Ragnar, tell Ivar that they must get rid of the survivors before they kill them and at night Ragnar and Ivar kill them all. Ragnar tells Ivar that you are special and you should always love yourself the way you are and think differently. At Bjorn they reach the strait, which is under the control of his uncle Rollo. The solution is that they either open the gate for them or fight. Bjorn goes to talk to Rollo. Rollo takes the map from him and imprisons them. And Lajatha goes with her army and enters Kattegat but stops the war and says that she was born and lived here and she cannot kill anyone and that she is here to take back what is her property. And a slog comes out with her sword and surrenders and tells her if you kill me my sons will take revenge on you and she turns away. But Lajatha kills her. Rollo brought Bjorn and brought him the expert in maps and knows everything about the east and how to go to Spain and there it is ruled by the Islamic Caliphate. And Rollo says I will not let you go unless I join you on this journey. And really go with it. In Kattegat, Oba and his brother knowing that Lajatha killed their mother. Oba tries to kill Lajatha, but the guards beat him. Lajatha tells them that you are Ragnar's sons and you are welcome anytime. And I let them go. And on the other side, Ragnar has arrived at the gate of Wessex. And the guards enter it. Ragnar gets beaten up by the guards. And they put Ragnar in a cage. When King Ekbert learns, he becomes sad because he considers Ragnar his friend, even though he is his enemy, and goes to see him. He says to Ragnar, No one will harm your son Ivar. King Ekbert, he brings up his son from Princess Mercia, Princess Quenthrith. Ragnar says he is not his son and that the princess lied to him, and drinks with King Ekbert. Ragnar tells him that the fortunateler told him, He will not die until the blind man can see him, but you have to kill me. And they kept talking about death, and the gods and the difference between Christianity and the Vikings. King Ekbert brings Alfred, son of Athelstan, and Ragnar embraces him and talks about Athelstan's friend. King Ekbert tells Ragnar that he will not be able to grant his wish, nor will he be able to kill him. Ragnar says hand me over to King Ale. He has wanted to kill me for a long time. King Ekbert wants to let him walk, but Ragnar tells him that my sons know I came here, and that they are getting bigger and that they are many, and I am sure they will kill you. But if you send me to King Ale and let my son Ivar go I will make him tell my brothers that you tried to help me so that when they come they will kill only Ale. And King Ekbert agrees. Ragnar speaks to Ivar and tells him that he uses his anger intelligently, and that he makes his thinking different from those around him. He tells him about the agreement between him and Ekbert and tells him to tell his brothers that King Ale and Ekbert will kill him. And Ragnar did all this because he wanted revenge on King Ekbert for what he had done in the colony, but no one wanted to come with him. But if they killed Ragnar, 
they will all come together for revenge. Before being sent to King Ale, Ragnar meets Alfred, son of Athelstan, and gives him his father's necklace. So they put him in the cage and took him to King Ale. Ragnar looks at the chariot driver and discovers that he is a blind man and says to Ragnar, I know you and I can see you from the smell of fear from the soldiers around you. And here, Ragnar realizes that he is finished, these are his last days, and he will die. As the soothsayer told him, you will die when the blind man sees you. Second day, he arrives at King Ale. He tells him that he will make him to atone for his past wrongs before killing him. And they hung him in the cage and beat him with spears and strangled him. And King Ale burns him and asks him for mercy. And Ragnar rejects Ragnar with all this torture and does not speak. And King Ale draws a cross on his head. Ragnar speaks. Small animals get very angry when they hear the torment of the biggest. He means that his sons will be angry when they find out what happened to him. And on the second day, they dug a big hole and put many snakes in it. King Ekbert is in disguise, and they threw Ragnar into the pit between the snakes, and the snakes killed him. Ragnar died in a very sad scene. Ivar returns to Kattegat and tells his brothers what happened, and that Ragnar died and knows that Lajatha killed a slave girl and goes to her and tells her that he will avenge his mother and kill her. Lajatha goes to the soothsayer and asks him if one of Ragnar's sons will kill her, and he answers, yes, and on the other side. Bjorn arrives in a Muslim country, and they kill and enter a mosque, and they find people praying, and Floki loves the sound of the call to prayer, and that they focus on prayer, and that there are no statues to pray to, and he prevents them from killing those who pray. And his wife finds a frightened girl, and decides to take her with her and raise her. And Floki is silent, knowing that their daughter's death affects her. Bjorn and his brothers see this person, the person with one eye representing Odin. Bjorn learns that Ragnar is dead and decides to return to Kattegat. In the Kattegat, Odin appears to Oba and Ivar, telling them that Ragnar died of snakes. Lajatha turned Kattegat into a commercial area. Oba and brothers are preparing for the army. Ivar pays bribes to people so he can control the guards to kill Lajatha. But Bjorn appears and says if I kill her, you must kill me too because I will take revenge and I know you want revenge but the most important thing is to avenge our father and not be divided. And Floki makes a car for Ivar to fight with them. Ivar wants to be the leader and differences occur between them. But Bjorn says angrily that I am older than you both, and I am the one who entered the battles and fought alongside Ragnar. And they go to England, and they find the king equipped with an army but the Vikings are too many, and destroy the army of King Ale, and tell them the place where Ragnar died and they go to the place. And they decided to kill King Ale in the manner of a blood eagle. Blood eagle. The blood eagle is a method of ritual execution of the late chosen member. According to the two cases mentioned in the sagas, the victims were placed in a prone position, their ribs were cut from their spine with a blunt instrument, and their lungs were pulled out through the opening to create a pair of wings. Let's go back to the events of the series. In this way there is nothing left but King Ekbert and their revenge. In Wessex, King Ekbert learns what happened to King El and hands over all matters of government to his son, because he knows that everything is over and that he awaits his death. And his son mobilizes the army and learns that Ragnar's sons are on their way to Wessex, and he goes out with the army to camps near Wessex. And in Kattegat they are attacked by this person but Lajatha repels the attack and catches him smoking meat. You learn from him that it was King Harald who sent him for that when he returns to rule Kattegat. Ivar told them he had a plan to exploit the mountains and forests. And the next day, a small group of Ragnar's army appeared to Ethelwolf's army and rushed to them. Bjorn's army runs and hides in the woods and another group appears behind them, and when Ethelwolf attacks them, they run away. Ethelwolf got angry and told his army that they must go to the ships of the Vikings and destroy them so that they could not escape and besiege them in Wessex. On the way, they find arrows like rain falling on them, and all the armies of Ragnar's sons around them from everywhere. And a very strong fight begins. Ethelwolf lost and he and a small group of survivors withdrew and returned to Wessex to take King Ekbert and flee. But King Ekbert says I want to die here. The king formally abdicated in favor of his son, Ethelwolf. They all leave until they regroup and forge alliances. King Ekbert and churchmen drink. There are no others left in Wessex. Bjorn and brothers arrive, and they drink. They find the city empty and burn everything. And they drink. And the girl that Floki's wife took to raise kills her and kills herself. And leave the drink and go out too. Vikings will kill him. But Bjorn stops them and puts him in the same cage as his father. King Ekbert, he offers to write land to them and give it to them as compensation for the settlement, and that this was Ragnar's dream, and he tells them in return that I choose the way I die, and they agree. Of course, they did not know that he abdicated the king to his son. It means that he has no right to give them any land, 
Eckbert, he chose to commit suicide and of course in the place he loves which is the bathroom. Floki buried his wife and decided to move away. Bjorn decided to continue his journey to the east and Harold's brother decided to go with him. Sigurd makes fun of his brother Ivar. He says that Ivar is crazy in front of people. Ivar kills him. In front of all people and brothers. And the fourth season ends. Skins after Ivar killed his brother and after the burial. Ivar apologizes to his brothers and they decide to rule the land of Wessex together. And Floki, after the death of his wife, walks in a small boat aimlessly and tells Ivar that after Helga's death, I have nothing left here I feel lost I will go and see where the gods will take me. Ivar puts the compass in the boat but when Floki sees it he throws it. It begins with Bjorn, King Harold's brother, haft in their journey to the Middle East, and they take the translated money with them to translate for them. And Oba decided to stay with Ivar in Wessex after he had conquered it. King Harold returns to Kattegat and believes that those who sent them last season succeeded in killing Ladger, but he is surprised by her in the ruler's chair. She tells him that you wanted to find me dead of course and arrest him and put him in jail. Harold offered Ladger the alliance, but she refuses, and Ivar persuades his brothers to go north to attack the city of York in order to use it as a fortress and headquarters. And Ethelwolf and the rest of his soldiers are in a swamp and disease is spreading among them. Alfred loses Athelstan's son. He regains consciousness and sees his father and says that he told him that the Northmen attacked York City and killed people. Ethelwolf decided to gather his army and move on to his wife's relatives and we see this person named Hemund who is cleric and a powerful warrior. They are planning to attack Vikings. In Bjorn, they approach Sicily and the translator suggests that they do not enter Sicily as fighters but they enter it as sellers and they do not go with all their ships and they go with fewer ships because they do not know what awaits them there and this is an easy way for them to enter. Bjorn agrees and Floki, after a few days at sea, reaches a new land and believes that this is the land of the gods, Asgard, and after days of thinking that the gods sent him to this land, he is happy and asks permission to bring settlers to the new land. At Kattegat King Harold's men release him. The guards tell Lajertha that King Harold has escaped from prison and has taken Astrid with him. And Harold tells Astrid that he will be king of all Norway and that he needs a queen and asks her to marry him. And she doesn't answer. And in York, Ethelwolf and the warrior Hemund attack the city and enter the city and find it empty and suddenly they find. Many arrows are heading towards them and they are trying to escape, but there are traps everywhere. Vikings are coming out from everywhere. There is a strong fight. And Ivar went down to the battlefield. We see that he is crazy. Hemund points out that he is a strong fighter. And Ethelwolf and his soldiers withdraw. And Ivar wins. Oba and H. Vitzirk propose peaceful solutions and negotiate with Ethelwolf. He goes to them but Hemund hits them and was about to kill them. But he gives them another chance and lets them go. And they return to Ivar. And he knows what they did and he gets very angry with them. And make fun of them. And Ivar says that his plans made them stronger. And he decided to be the commander of the army. The Oba told him that he was leaving and going back to Kattegat. In the next day, he walks but in the last moments H. Fitzirk's brothers leave him and he decides to stay with Ivar. Harold arrives in his kingdom. Astrid is extremely disgusted with her. And when he tries to approach her she slaps him in the face. But after two days, she agreed to marry him. In Bjorn, they arrive in Sicily and can enter it as sellers. Once they enter, the Sicilian commander Euphemius, not believing them to be merchants, draws his sword and tries to confront them. But Bjorn takes the sword from him. And the captain laughs constantly and says they are welcome. And at night the commander Euphemius tells them that he had guards of Russian Vikings and offers them to be his guards. Bjorn agrees. Oba arrives at Kattegat and Lanjitha tells him that she will help him and ally with him against Ivar. And in return he will fight with her against King Harold. And he agrees. Hemund convinces Ethelwolf to besiege York for days until they starve to death, and then attack them. After days of siege, Ivar makes people burn everything they have and his brother doesn't understand and Ivar makes fun of him and turns away. And Ivar was deceiving Ethelwolf that they were burning the bodies of those who died of starvation. And indeed Ethelwolf entered the city, and they found it completely empty. Hemund notes that there are many mice and still asks why mice are above ground and not below ground. Vikings on Ivar's orders emerge from the underground and appear from everywhere and there is a fierce battle. Ethelwolf retreats to protect her son with a group of soldiers. And Ivar sees the battle from a high place and follows Hemund. And when he falls from his horse Ivar shouts and stops the whole battle and tells them to bring his horse. And when Hemund rides and gets ready he gives Ivar a signal to return to the fight and we see that Ivar has reached the stage of madness and arrogance and a very great sense of power. Floki arrives at Kattegat and tells them what happened to him. He has found the land of the gods and he has come to invite people to establish a colony there. 
Lanjitha tells him that Kanagat is facing a war against King Harold and his threat that he does not invite people to go with him. But he invites people in secret to the land of the gods. And he manages to gather a group of settlers. But one of them is a traitor who tells Lanjitha. Lanjitha attacks them, telling them that the penalty for treason is death. But she cannot kill and decides to let them go. In Bjorn, they see their interpreter speaking to the commander's wife, Euphemius. Bjorn catches him to find out from him what is happening. He reveals to them that the Sicily captain is not the real boss. There is an Arab leader named Siad and Allah, and that he is the controller and the real prince, and that his place is in Africa. And Floki and those who arrive in the promised land discover that it is a wasteland consisting of swamps and hot water wells, not as described by Floki. And people turn on Floki, including Kettle and his family. But this person named Ivan and his family stood up for Floki and split up. Floki tells them that they must first build a temple for Thor and Kittle says that winter is approaching and that they must farm so that they will not die and be divided a second time. But they vote and the temple wins. But before the construction was finished, someone set it on fire. Accuses son of Ivan. It was he who burned it. Ivan's son was killed, son of Kittle. And Ivar took Hammond with him and went to King Harold to ally with him against Ladratha and his brothers. Astrid bribes a sailor to warn Ladratha. He can deliver the warning. And in Kattegat, Margaret tries to make people hate Lajertha, and Lajertha overhears her and threatens that if she betrays her, she will kill her. Margaret goes to Oba. She tells him to leave Lajertha in the war until she loses and he becomes king and she is the queen of Kattegat. And Bjorn goes with the leader on his journey to King Ziadat Allah. Emir Ziadat Allah welcomes Bjorn, Hafton, and Sinric when they arrive in his town with Kasha and Commander Euphemius. He gives the appearance of being a tolerant and friendly man, but is a conquering, strategic. He offers to trade with the Vikings. He informs Bjorn that he speaks Old Norse, thanks to the Kievan Vikings. King Ziadat Allah tells them that the cooks made special food for them and they will feel sad if they do not eat. At the same time, Commander Euphemius disappears. Bjorn was surprised that he knew their language and that he made deals with the Russian Vikings. That Kasha is more powerful than she seems. Sinric says that they should leave and return to their ships. Before they can escape, the trio are arrested and about to be executed on Kasha's orders when a sandstorm suddenly approaches. Sinric tells Hafton and Bjorn that they can use the sandstorm to escape. They manage to fight off their captors, return to their ships, and sail back to Kattegat. And Floki tries to convince Kittle that he is not avenging his son and that they are in for a new life and should forget about a life of vengeance on the Vikings. And in return, he will make him the judge over them, and he will be distinguished. However, they discover that Ivan's son has been killed. And Floki is sad that the chain of revenge is about to begin. And Ivar tortured Hemund and Ivar told him there must be a divine reason. That you are still alive and that you can kill more Vikings if you ally with me against Lajertha. Hemund is convinced. Bjorn and Hafton arrive at the Kattegat. Bjorn learns what happened from Ivar and King Harald. And Lajertha says to Hafton, Will he fight alongside his brother Harald or Bjorn? And he says it Bjorn because he saved my life and I owe him. Lajertha tells Bjorn that they need more help so. Called tribal leaders, Bjorn marries the daughter of a prince of them. Torvi is divorced. The great battle begins between Bjorn and Oba and Lajertha and Hafton, against Harald and Ivar and H. Vitzirk and Hemund. Lajertha proposes peace to Bjorn and that they speak to them first instead of blood. They make negotiations and blame each other but Ivar refuses peace. He speaks with malice and hatred towards his brothers and Lajertha who killed his mother. And Harold tells his brother Hafton to leave them and come with him and his brother refuses and Harold says he is the one who will kill him. Before facing off, Ivar takes Astrid and a group of soldiers to protect their ships. And H. Vitzirk takes part of the army trying to deter from the forest. But Bjorn's new wife and her tribe are undercover and kill them, and H. Vitzirk escapes. And Bjorn started a confrontation between him and King Harold. It will be a tough fight. Hemund is injured and falls. And King Harold finds Lajertha and her army behind them. And King Harold summons Ivar and his army. And Astrid told her they needed us and Ivar told her it was too late because we couldn't go back. Harold finds no help. His men die, withdraws, returns to Ivar to the ships and Ivar asks him about Hemund and tells him that he died in battle. And Bjorn, after the battle of Lajertha, finds Hemund. Bjorn tells her that he is a Christian and will kill him. But Lajertha stops him and sees his sword. It is a powerful and distinctive sword and you know that it is a powerful warrior and you order it to be processed. And Ivar says that he will not give up and will kill Lajertha, who killed his mother. And H. Vitzirk tells him that the last time he met his uncle Rollo, he told him to come to him if they needed anything. And Ivar will agree. So H. Vitzirk goes to his uncle to ask for his help. 
In the Kattegat Hemund recovers, talks to Lajertha, falls in love with her, and tells her, You saved me and my loyalty to you and join them. Yorn learns that his uncle Rolo has allied with Ivar, and decides to go to Ivar and try to reach a peaceful solution with him. And Ethelwolf was bitten by an insect, fell ill, and died, and his son, Ethelred, will be king after his father. But his mother convinces him to give up power to his brother Alfred, and he will be the king. Yorn arrives to his brother Ivar and H. Vitzirk will arrive with many soldiers from his uncle Rolo and his uncle will arrive in a few days. Ivar and Harold refuse Bjorn's offer of peace. In Kattegat Oba he married a Torvi. And Margaret is mad because her dream of being queen is over. And you go to the fortune editor and tell him, will you be a queen someday? And the soothsayer tells her that she is crazy and that she will never be queen. They are preparing for battle. Very strong fight. King Harold goes to his brother in battle and kills him. And Astrid goes to Lajertha. Lajertha does not want to confront her. But Astrid tells her that she has to die because she is pregnant by Harold and she must die and confront Lajertha. Lajertha kills it and is very sad for her. He faces H. Vitzirk Oba, but Oba, at the last moment, backed out of killing his brother. Ivar and his uncle Rolo's army enter the fray, and Bjorn and those with him withdraw and return to the Kattegat. They are preparing a Kattegat before Ivar arrives. Lajertha is very sad, with Ivar entering Kattegat and becoming king making people bow to him. Rolo arrives at Kattegat. Ivar tells him that Bjorn, Oba and Lajertha have disappeared and they don't know where they are. In the morning Rolo goes to the place where he hid in the past at the time of the attack on the Kattegat and finds Lajertha and those with her. And he tells Lajertha that he loves her. He offers to go with him to Paris. And he told her he was Bjorn's father. Bjorn refuses to go with him, telling him that Ragnar is his father. And he will kill him. But Oba stops him and lets him walk. And they didn't know what to do because Rolo would surely tell Ivar where they were. And Heumann tells them that they should go with him to England and that he might give them safe passage. And he would do all this because he loves Lajertha. Bjorn tells them that Hemund will betray them and Lajertha defends Hemund. They find no other solution and agree to Hemund's suggestion. And Rolo returns to Ivar and tells him that he knows the whereabouts of Lajertha, Bjorn, and the others. But first he must make a deal. And Rolo says you will pay every year 6,000 silver, 200 gold, 1,000 slaves, 200 tons of meat and many requests. Ivar gets angry but to find out where Lajertha and the others are, he agrees. Ivar goes to the place but finds the place is empty, Lajertha and others are gone. But they leave Margaret because she is crazy. Ivar takes Margaret with him. Rolo leaves from Kattegat, and Ivar returns to Kattegat. H. Vitzirk when he sees Margaret and her condition, takes an interest in her. Bjorn and Lajertha steal a boat and go to England. Once there, they found an army waiting for them. Hemund tells them not to shoot and introduces himself to them telling them that he wants to meet King Ethelwal. And Ethelred tells him that the king is dead and that Alfred is now king. And they go to King Alfred, but they are imprisoned. When Floki decided to sacrifice someone to the gods because they had no food, and Kettle and his family decided to sacrifice Floki for bringing them here, Ivan and his family refuse and come to Floki's defense. Tyen votes, and the separating voice is Kettle's son and he votes with Floki and they don't kill him. Floki cry and tell. Odd daughter of Kittle that he has not seen the gods and that these are all fantasy and that he is mad. And Bjorn, in prison tells them that Hemund betrayed them. And Lajertha defends him. Hemund tells King Alfred that he promised them safe passage. Alfred says that everything has changed. That Hehemen's reputation has suffered among the people after he fought with the Vikings. And that the king has brought Hehemen's assistant to become a clergyman in the church. And that he cannot restore Heman to his position because the kingdom is on the verge of war with the Vikings and there are many opponents of the king and that he cannot lose the support of the church but he promised him that he would restore it to his position in the future and that he would speak to Lajertha and Bjorn. He brought them from prison and told them that they could stay in peace. And Byron says that they have a right to the eastern lands and that they have papers to prove it from King Eckbert before his death. Alfred tells them that Eckbert abdicated power before he gave them the land and so the papers in their possession are void. But he tells them that he can give them the land and cede it to them, but in return they fight with him against the Vikings. In order to trust them, Yuba and his wife must convert to Christianity, and they agree because they have no other choice. In the Kattegat, Ivar announces that his wife Frades is pregnant. Harold doesn't like it because Eva would stay in power that way. In fact, Ivar cannot have children, but Frades convinced him that he was a god, and she wounded him in the hand and told him that she was pregnant. But she was pregnant from the servant, and she killed the servant. And Ivar believes that he is a god, and becomes even more mad. Hemun goes to the bishop of the church who has taken over and threatens him. 
The bishop spies on Heeman and knows his relationship with Lajertha and sends a message threatening Heeman, and I will tell the king about his relationship with Lajertha paganism. So Heeman went to him and killed him. King Alfred knows what Heeman has done in the church and gets very angry. But Heeman told him that he had killed him because he had found out that he was plotting against you. Alfred decided that he would not punish Heeman. His brother Ethelred and some nobles decided to plot against Alfred and turn against him. Alfred, to cover up what Heeman did, announces his marriage and announces the preparations for the celebration. And Bjorn someone comes up to him and tells him that he's his brother, son of Ragnar and Princess Quenthrith, and that he had been banished long ago. But when he learned that his brethren had come to Wessex, he resolved to come to them. He says it will help him, and he hates King Alfred. King Harold leaves Kattegat and returns to his kingdom. He finds that Ivar left his men there. He agrees with all of Son, their commander, to invade England, after which they turn against Ivar and take Kattegat. Oba and his wife, Torvi, converted to Christianity. Bjorn is angry about what is happening. Floki meets all the settlers and tries to solve the problems between them and says they must work for the future of the next generations and looks at Kettle's pregnant daughter. But she disappears and they are all searching for her. Floki sees the ghost of Kettle's daughter. She tells him that she was murdered and that the one who killed her was Ivan's son and directs him to the place where he was buried. Floki goes to them and banishes Ivan and his family. Ivor is getting madder. He tells his brother H. Fitzer that he is a god and he will make a big celebration because he is a god. He will offer a human sacrifice. He tells people that he is a god and that he will sacrifice Lajertha and bring a lookalike of Lajertha, kill her and hang her. H. Fitzirk leaves because his brother is crazy. King Alfred knows that King Harold and his army are approaching Wessex and tells Oba that it is his responsibility to protect the kingdom. Ethelred agrees with the nobles to kill Alfred. Ivar, he goes to the fortune editor and says he is a god. The soothsayer tells him that he is crazy and that his path is as broken as his foot. Ivar kills him and burns his body. Ivar is surprised. When H. Fitzirk tells him the fortune teller has been killed, Ivar says that he will bring whoever killed the soothsayer. Heemun breaks up with Lajertha because of a dream that people burn in the fire and is very afraid of God. And when King Alfred, before they go out to fight against King Harold, orders the arrest of a nobleman for treason, and Judith, Alfred's mother, tortures him until she finds out who has a relationship with him and learns from him that he is her son. Ethelred is the leader of the conspiracy. Oba arrives at King Harold and tells him all the gold and silver you want. I will get it for you, but you go from here. Harold refuses. King Alfred, Bjorn, Lajertha, and Oba attack Harold. Strong fight. They win because of Oba's plan, but Heemun dies in battle. Lajertha sees Heemun die and she gets shocked and shattered. King Harold withdraws, and after the fight... Bjorn searches for Lajertha among the wounded and dead, but to no avail. And Lajertha disappears. King Alfred keeps his promise and gives the Oba and the Vikings the land he promised them. So they settled in it and planted it. And King Alfred is known for his brother's betrayal from his mother. But he told his mother that he would forgive him and that he had saved him in the war. And arrest the rest of the conspirators. And kill them all. And a nation speaking to Ethelred. She learned of his betrayal of his brother. And he promised her he would never do it again. Bjorn continues to search for Lajertha, to no avail. H. Fitzirk is known from a market vendor about Buddha. The seller gave him a Buddha statue, and H. Fitzirk wants to know more about Buddha. Ivan's son returns to the settlement after Floki banishes them. He tells them that his family is sick and cold and that his father has changed and become a good person and begs them to save his family. They meet to decide. Floki tells him that they have made the decision and that they will help him. In Wessex, King Alfred returns sick and fainting and we learn that he faints from time to time. And it stays like this for several days. And the noble's object again. He is weak and sick. And the king does not have to be weak. Ethelred intervenes and takes control of them. But he defies a nation and it seems from his words that he seeks to betray his brother once more that he wants to be king. And the next day, Judith speaks to Ethelred. And knowing that he wants him to be king, she puts a poisonous herb on his food that kills her son. Bjorn goes to York to King Harold so that they ally themselves and attack Kattega and take power from Ivar. Bjorn finds Magnus, who he says is Ragnar's son, and joins them. Ivar receives the news of King Harold's loss in Wessex and decides to attack Wessex as well. H. Fitzirk does not support the decisions of Ivar. Ivar decides to send H. Fitzirk too. King Olaf wants to persuade him into an alliance and threatens to kill Margaret if he does not leave. H. Vitzirk agrees, and King Alfred recovers and learns that his brother has died. His mother says that Ethelred betrayed him again, and that she killed one of her sons to save the other, and that a king must do terrible things to be stronger. 
Floki arrives at Ivan's sick and apologizes to Kettle saying Floki was right and we have to change. And Kettle does not forget his revenge and says this is our nature, we Vikings. And he slew Ivan's wife and sons and killed him and hanged their heads. King Harold wants to rule Kattegat and Bjorn tells him that people will not accept you as a ruler and that he is the eldest son of Ragnar and says when I die the rule of Kattegat will be yours. And they both love Gunhild. But Bjorn goes to her and asks her to marry him. Gunhild agrees. And also, King Harold goes to her and says he is going to be king of all Norway and that he wants her to be queen of Norway. He asks her to marry. Gunhild says she wants to be queen of Norway, but who told you that you would be king of Norway? Harold gets angry. In Wessex, King Alfred knows that there is a fleet of Viking ships heading towards them. Oba tells Alfred to make him commander of the army, and that the armies are coming to them in great numbers, and he is the only one who can reach a solution with them or there is no hope. Odd knows what happened, can't stand it, and throws herself down a waterfall. Floki buries her and tells Kettle that he is the reason why his daughter killed herself and that he is able to kill him in one blow but he won't and leaves him and leaves the whole place and leaves. H. Vitzerk reached King Olaf and entered to meet King Olaf in the sauna. When he sees him he says I know you Buddha. At the same time in Kattegat, Ivar speaks with Margaret and he learns that she destroyed his statue in the city. He ordered her and her family to be burned alive. And H. Vitzerk talks about his brother to King Olaf and that he is unjust and calls himself a god and asks him to ally with him against Ivar and remove him from the rule of Kattegat. And King Olaf agrees. Judith goes to a witch in the woods to cure her of her cancer. She finds her Lajatha and takes her with her. Oba arrives at the army that wants to attack Wessex. He introduces himself as Oba, son of Ragnar, and the whole army chants his name and knows that his fame and that of Ragnar will save him. Oba, 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 you're famous. He knows that they are three united kings and meets them. He says that King Alfred gave them land and they can join them. And they plan it for the future and he can convince two of them. But Frodo the third king refuses the Oba's offer. And they decided to fight Frodo man to man against the Oba rather than shed blood. And the laws of war, to be a fight to the death. If King Frodo dies and Oba wins then the kings will grant Oba's wish. And if Oba dies, they will attack Wessex. It will be a tough fight. Oba is about to die. Torvi is protected by his wife. Oba kills Frodo and wins. And the military chanting the name of Oba. He Oba has won. Oba. Oba. <laughs> the son of Ragnar has won. Oba. Returned to Wessex wounded for treatment. Thanks to what the Oba did, he prevented a mighty war that could have happened. And they will take the armies of the kings to the new land, as Oba told them. And Lajatha goes with them after she recovers and remembers Ragnar that this was his dream and it is now a reality. And King Alfred learns that his mother is dying of cancer. And Ivar's wife has a child but the child is deformed. Ivar decides to leave him in the forest and go so that he will not suffer as Ivar suffers. And his wife knows what Ivar did and gets angry and Ivar hits her. And Floki walks and talks to the gods and does not understand what is happening and does not find answers to his questions and continues to search for the gods. Until he reaches a cave and enters it. He calls out to the gods and sees the cross inside. And he screams hard. Until a mountain collapse occurs, H. Vitzerk and King Olaf arrive at a camp near Kattegat. Bjorn and Harold also arrive at the Kattegat. Bjorn goes to H. Vitzerk and learns that he has come to fight Ivar, and they embrace each other and become allies. The army is growing. H. Vitzerk says it was his destiny to kill Ivar, and Oba decides to return to his homeland, Kattegat, and fight Ivar. Lajatha goes with him, and King Alfred helps him in the army. Ivar tells the people that they are under attack and if his brothers enter they will kill them all and that he is a god. And his wife goes to his brothers and tells them that Ivar is crazy and they have to get rid of him. She tells them that there is a secret passage into the city created by Eva so he can escape from it if he needs to and directs them to the entrance. The next day, they enter the Kattegat from the secret entrance and all of Ivar's defenses fail. Bjorn says he is one of them and that he does not want to kill anyone. Ivar and his soldiers arrived and killed Ivar's soldiers. Ivar goes to his wife and says you are a traitor, and you told them about the secret entrance. Bjorn and H. Vitzerk beat the soldiers and entered the hall and found Ivar's wife murdered and next to her a box containing a small skull. And these are the remains of Ivar's son. They are looking for Ivar, but they can't find him. And the Ober reached Kattegat and met his brothers. And Bjorn sees his mother and is glad that she lives and gives him the king's sword and declares him king of Kattegat. The season ends with the scene of an Ivar donning village clothes and running away. After Bjorn becomes the king of Kattegat which is celebrated by the people of Kattegat. 
He told them that he wanted to put Kattegat on the map and that he wanted to make it the most important platform for trade and that he wanted to establish trade relations and alliances, and that Eva's reign is over. Ivar escaped with some of her followers and reached the Silk Road, an ancient route of trade between many nations, and full of merchants. The Ivar will continue to travel from one place to another until it reaches Russia. Eva finds that someone is following him, and everywhere he is pursued. Suddenly, Russian soldiers attack them, and they kill Ivar's henchmen knowing that the person who was watching him is their snitch to the Russians. When the Russians learn that Ivar is a Viking king, they take him and his servant to meet King Oleg. And King Oleg asks normal questions and why he came here and Ivar tells him that he is the king of the Vikings and that he is on the run because his brothers took the rule from him and that he is kind. And we know who the king of the Russians were from the Vikings, but they entered the Christian religion a long time ago. Oleg welcomes him to the palace, and Oleg goes to Ivar's servant and tortures him to make sure Ivar's story, and the servant tells him that Ivar is a king and that he is a god. Oleg decides to kill the servant in front of Ivar, and he brought him, bound him hands and feet in different directions, and killed him in a gruesome manner. Ivar is shocked, and in Kattegat, Bjorn decided to punish everyone who helped Ivar. He says they deserve to die for treason, but he decides to banish them, and they live their lives in exile forbidden to trade or start a family, confiscate their property, and burn them. A scar mark so that all who look at them will know they are exiles. Lanjitha decides that she is tired of wars, killing, and blood, and that she wants to set up a farm far away and live out the rest of her life there as she did with Ragnar in the past. Bjorn is not happy with Lanjitha's decision, but he agrees because she is happy with her decision. Oleg takes Ivar, and they hold onto a plank they are tied to a parachute and they are pulled by horses and they go up to the sky Ivar is scared and unbelievable he can fly and Oleg says I know you are a god their god is afraid and they fly over the city. In Kattegat someone delivers a letter from King Harold. He tells him that King Olaf attacked York and King Harold lost and King Olaf captured him. Harold asks for Bjorn's help. King Oleg takes Ivar to a secret place under the palace. There is a sarcophagus with a statue of Oleg's wife on it. And he tells Ivar that he loved his wife very much, crying, and that he killed her because she betrayed him. Ivar remembers his wife, that he loved her, and the similarity between the two stories, and that he also killed her because she betrayed him. Oleg says he will help Ivar in his attack on Kattegat, but he will prepare a big army first and end his troubles in the kingdom with his brothers first. In Kattegat, Kettle arrives and the Oba meets him and they talk to each other and Kettle tells him that he has come to take new settlers to Iceland. Oba was asked about Floki and why he did not come with him. Kittle says that Floki got bored of the base a long time ago, and one day he disappeared and went, and we searched for him a lot, and we did not find a trace of him. And Oba looks at it like that, and doubt it. And he says on another topic, I heard about a man who found a large and beautiful land in western Iceland, but a storm swept his boat and pushed him away from this land. Kittle says he knows the story, and that this person lives in a settlement in Iceland, and his name is Other. And Oba says he should accept it and they agreed that Oba would go with Kettle to Iceland. In Kattegat, the Orn and his brothers think of saving King Harald, but at the same time he cannot leave Kattegat at the beginning of his reign and go to war, especially after Oba decides to sail to Iceland and Lajitha is going to build a farm and live on her own. He has to think about making Kattegat an important trading area. But King Harald helped Bjorn before and is supposed to help him now, and he can't come up with a solution. And Oba says the decision is up to you, you are the king. And H. Fitzer continues to drink and take hallucinogenic mushrooms and does not like what his brothers say, and all he wants is to kill Ivar because he burned his lover. Lanjitha and Torvi go where Agatha will make her farm. Bjorn, a maid, tells him of her love, and Bjorn refuses at first. But she tries and says he needs luck and that if he loved her he would be better and rejecting her will lose the war and he is cheating on his wife. King Oleg takes Ivar, and they go to King Oleg's brother Askold, and the little prince Igor. And Ivar knows that King Oleg is called the Soothsayer. Ivar is asked why they call it that. And he tells him as soon as they offered him a drink. And he refused to drink. But everyone with him drank and died because the drink was poison. Askold and Little Prince Igor. And they talk. Ivar plays with Little Prince Igor and tries to win his friendship. Askold offers them a drink and Ivar will drink. But it is noticed that Oleg did not drink. And Ivar backs off from drinking and returns the cup. And Oleg dances. Askold drinks, poisons the drink, and dies. Oleg takes away Prince Igor and Ivar and finds Askold's soldiers killed. And Ivar is amazed and Oleg takes the little prince and walks. Oba has gone to Lajitha on the farm she has established and brings Bjorn's children with him. The Oba tells them about Kettle and that he doubts his story about Floki and that he will go with him to Iceland to look for Floki and look for the one who discovered the new land. 
and Bjorn reaches his mother. He tells them that he has decided to save King Harald and asks Oba and Torvi to postpone their travel and to wait in Kattegat until he returns and Oba and Torvi agree. And Ivar, Oleg's older brother Dyer arrives after learning that Oleg killed his little brother, and he threatens him and wants little Prince Igor and never wants to see him again. And we learn that the little Prince Igor is the rightful heir to the whole kingdom, and that whoever will be under his tutelage will rule the whole kingdom. Oleg tells him to leave and that he wants to see him again, but unfortunately he will die in three days. And Dyer says do you really believe yourself that you are a clairvoyant, you know nothing. And if you are a real fortune teller, I will ask you a question that no one knows the answer to. I got married secretly a few days ago, can you tell me what is the name of my wife? Oleg without hesitation says her name is Katya. Dyer freezes in shock. Oleg moves and Katya appears behind him. And Ivar is dumbfounded and continues laughing and applauding. And Oleg laughs too. Lajitha wears her armor and holds her sword and buries it and swears that she will not kill anyone and that she is tired of wars and blood. And Katagat, Bjorn goes to Kettle and tells him that he doesn't believe his story and doesn't believe that Floki left for no reason and that he will not go to Iceland and that he will come with him to save King Harald. And the people Bjorn banished had been watching Lajitha on her farm for days. Bjorn goes to King Harald and is bid farewell to his wife and servant Ingrid. They pray and attack at night from inside the water to escape the defenses, but King Olaf knows how to think of Bjorn, and he prepares for them at the onset of dawn and ignites a huge fire along the shore and throws them with fiery arrows and keeps laughing and showing madness on him. And Bjorn tells those with him to go under the water and withdraw, and we see King Harald in prison, and they took King Olaf and gave him food and drink. Tell him he knows Bjorn will come to save him and King Harald feels hopeful. But Olaf tells him you are still my captive and orders them back to the prison, laughing. And Ivar, Oleg asks how he knew his brother would die in three days. Oleg says he does not know. Ivar says how did you know his wife and brought her? Oleg says that his wife was his servant, and it was he who ordered her to go to his brother and fall in love with him and allow him to marry her so that he could control his brother. And that all this was planned by Oleg. At the same time, Oleg's soldiers attacked. Dyer and his soldiers killed his soldiers and captured Dyer. And Ivar returns and Oleg sees his brother's leashes and puts him in a dog's cage and ties him with an iron face like dogs. Eva takes pity on him. In Kattegat, H. Vitzerk's condition has worsened greatly from the abundance of hallucinogenic mushrooms and his drink, and he sees delusions and delusions that ghosts haunt him and that the ghost of his burnt mistress appears to him everywhere. And they all try to help him, stop him from drinking, and get him out of this situation. But he used to see Ivar everywhere in front of him and would rather drink to escape but the situation is getting worse. Oba will be king in Kattegat until Bjorn comes back and leaves Bjorn's children with Lajertha and takes his wife and goes back to Kattegat and tells them he needs people they trust to send Kattegat representatives to trade. In Lajertha, a group of women living in the surrounding villages went to Lajertha when they heard that she was Lajertha the Great Warrior. We know that they are all widows and that their husbands died in the wars and that many of them were warriors but now they are living in peace raising their children. They learned to Lajertha that an exile attacked one of their own and killed her. And the next day, another attack on another, killing and robbing her. They told Lajertha. Then Lajertha decided to break her promise and go to draw her sword again to protect herself and the women. And Sivar befriends young Prince Igor and tells him that he is the true king and heir to the kingdom. Ivar makes a deal with Dyer and helps him escape from the cage and informs Oleg and gets angry but he doesn't know that Ivar is the one who escaped him. The exiles attack Lajertha and those with her, who defend themselves and prevent them from stealing food. The exiles withdraw, but Bjorn's son emerges, wields a sword, and calls out to Lajertha. And the leader of the exiles sees him, goes to him, kills him, and flees. And Lajertha ran to him and cried and he died in her arms. Meanwhile, Gunhild sees a dream about Lajertha, and they are at war and she decides to go to her. Yuba talks to his brother and tries to help him and asks him to travel as an ambassador to Kattegat and go and make trade agreements on the Silk Road. And Bjorn decides to go alone to meet King Olaf. King Olaf said that he wanted to establish a strong union between all the kings and that he wanted to unite Norway and Bjorn wanted to be the king of all Norway. Bjorn says he does not accept being king. In this way we shall have elections and all the kings shall vote for someone to be king of Norway over them. They celebrate and invite all the kings and King Harald comes out of prison. Gunhild reaches Lajertha and learns what happened and decides to stay with her because the exiles might attack again and Lajertha refuses to stay because she is pregnant but Gunhild stays. Oleg introduces his girlfriend Keisha to Ivar and they will get married soon and Ivar is shocked because she looks like his dead wife and he feels that something is wrong. And Bjorn pray all the kings and hold the election ceremony. 
King Olaf explains that each king votes for only one of the candidates. The one and the loudest will be the king of Norway, and there is no backing down. Whoever chooses Bjorn chooses Red, and King Olaf began to vote for Bjorn. But he is surprised that the rest of the kings chose King Harald. Harald agreed with every one of them behind Bjorn. Harald won, and was appointed king of Norway as he dreamed. And Oba, the mission is ready but Hvitserk isn't there and I can't find it. He is still in his delusions and running away from them. And the Oba decides that the mission will go without him. And when the exiled Lajatha attacks them, there is a great confrontation and they can kill many of them. Lajatha is confronted with the murder of Bjorn's son and refuses to have anyone intervene. And it will be a strong battle. And she will be able to kill him Lajatha and they are proud that she is a strong fighter and she is severely injured and decides to return to Kattegat so that Oba knows what happened and tells Torvi that her son is dead. And Bjorn in celebration Harald sends people to kill Bjorn, but he can escape from them. And in Kattegat H. Vitzirk, he has hallucinations and sees Ivar in the form of a snake and kills him. It turned out to be Lajatha, and that the fortune teller's prophecy was fulfilled, and that she died at the hands of one of Ragnar's sons, and it turned out that he was H. Vitzirk not Ivar, as she expected. Agatha dies and H. Vitzirk flees. The Oba does not know who killed her, and they are all in grief. They find H. Vitzirk, but he is not speaking and Oba suspects that he killed her. Ivar, someone comes with a message from Prince Dyer, saying that he and little Prince Igor prepare to escape and kill Oleg. In Kattegat they have a Lajatha burial ceremony, which is a royal ceremony. One of the murder volunteers to be a servant to Lajatha in Valhalla, and they put her next to her in the ship and burned her. Lajatha descends into the sea, and we see a scene in which she joins Ragnar. Bjorn arrives and finds out what happened. H. Vitzirk took grief because his brother killed his mother because of drugs and ordered them to be burned alive. But Bjorn looks at Oba, and Oba throws the axe and cuts the rope that binds you and falls into the water and jumps into the water and saves him. Bjorn says he saved him but never wants to see him again and throws him out of the Kattegat. Harald, King Olaf has been captured, says he is imprisoning him and orders them to imprison him. Oba travels with his wife with Kjetil to Iceland, and Bjorn with the servant Ingrid, and his wife caught him. But she says she agrees to a second wife. Prince Harald receives news from his soldiers that soldiers have attacked a village and killed those inside, and says they are Russian Vikings. He gives the flag that they left in the village. Oba arrives in Iceland and learns about the settlers. Oba meets other, and his wife, Oba, gives birth, and the birth is difficult, but she gives birth, and the child is fine. Oba hears, other prays to Christ and learns from him his story and that he was with the Christians years ago and that he fled from them by sea and faces a storm that swept the ship to the new land and says it is heaven on earth. But he could not set foot on it because the ship was washed away by a storm and lost at sea. He gave Floki's ring to Oba and said Floki had given it to him. And Oba does not know how to believe him and at the same time wants to reach the new land and decides to sail with him to the new land. Bjorn marries Ingrid, a maid. Bjorn guard Eric discovers the presence of Russian soldiers near Katkat and fights with them and returns to Bjorn and tells him what happened and gives him the flag. Bjorn tells him to go to King Harald for an alliance, and they should put their differences aside. He goes but Harald arrogantly refuses to listen to him in the first place. He mocks and beats him, but King Olaf tells him to listen to him, and Bjorn certainly has something important. King tells Oleg, Ivar that he found H. Vitzirk and learns from him what happened and that he killed Ladrtha. And Oleg prepares his army to attack Kattegat. Bjorn arrives at King Harald of York, and they make a plan of defense and send all the kings to join them and Harald doesn't like that Bjorn is making the plan. He secretly goes to Bjorn's second wife, Ingrid, and attacks her. Ivar helps Oleg plan the attack on York, saying that they attack from the shore and the river and break the bridge. They reached York and the battle began, but the Russians are too numerous and they burn the defenses, and King Harald withdraws. And the Russians continue to attack the shore, and their ships are very large in number, and King Harald is wounded, and Bjorn Eric's guard takes the crown from him. Ivar and Oleg attack with their modern ships and overrun the bridge. Ivar confronts Bjorn. Ivar kills Bjorn. Bjorn's return to Kattegat with his wife and bodyguard Eric. Katjat enters and people are very sad. In York, I am not sure that Bjorn will die, and Westrick says that Bjorn will not die so easily. Ivar says that he is a murderer, and they should attack the Kattegat. King Oleg says they must repair the ships first, and the guards brought King Olaf and found him in prison, and the injured King Harald. Oba preparations for the voyage with other, they prepare two ships and are going to take 14 people with them. Kettle will go with them. In York, they decided not to kill King Harald, but Oleg decided to kill King Olaf. He decides to burn him alive and orders Oleg, the young Prince Igor, to kill Olaf. He says he can't, 
but Ivar looks at him to tell him to do it. The friendship between them became strong. Olaf burns and dies. King Harald escapes from prison and Ivar gets angry with the guards. In Kattegat Bjorn's wives are in the ruling chair. One of the kings Bjorn sent to before the war arrives. He says that he acted immediately upon the arrival of Bjorn's letter, that he knew what had happened in York with King Harald and came in the hope of saving Kattegat. And he knows that Bjorn is on his deathbed and meets him and Bjorn speaks with difficulty saying that the number of Russians is great and that Ivar is with them. Eric says that he can take Bjorn's wife and run away with them. And Bjorn gets angry despite his illness and says that they will not surrender and that they will fight and asks him to promise that. Ivar speaks with Prince Igor and agrees with him that they are running from Oleg and that it was he who ran away from his uncle. Ivar and the Ruse reach the Kattegat and the king who went to Bjorn betrays Bjorn and goes to the Ruse, but they kill him. And the battle begins. The Russians are surprised by Bjorn's immunity, and he moves towards them, shocking them all, and some of them say that he has returned from the dead. We see that he told his wife that he wanted to ask her to help him wear his armor. And in battle, one of the Russians goes and finds the soldiers frightened, so he shoots arrows at him and keeps Bjorn still. Hit by a number of arrows, the soldiers are terrified. Ivar says it's impossible. Bjorn picks up his sword and raises it to the sky one last time as a signal to the warriors who appear behind him. Great fight and Bjorn dies, and the Russians are withdrawing. In Kattegat, they make a statue of Bjorn like the battle. After Bjorn's death, he becomes the arbiter between his first wife, Gunhild, and his second, Ingrid. And a split occurs. Ranger Eric agrees with Gunhild that he is trying to find out the information and backs it up publicly. The Russians return after defeat. Oleg's popularity decreased because he took all the soldiers with him. Many of them died, and he returned in defeat. Oleg began to act stupid, like sending soldiers to smash everything in the little prince's room. He gathered every division commander in the army and ordered them to dig their graves with their own hands and said that the defeat was because of them. And Oleg orders the little prince to be executed. Igor looks on and kills Igor, and the rest of the soldiers kill him. The Oba begin their journey of days at sea in search of a dreamland. At night a big storm occurs and Torvi tells her daughter a story about a monster that lives in the sea. The girl imagines the monster in the sea and gets scared and runs and the storm hits the ship and the girl falls into the sea and no one can save her. Gunhild, you see Lajatha and Bjorn everywhere. Eric and Ingrid agree that elections will be held and the people will decide who is the ruler. Ingrid agree. Strangers enter the Kattegat, kill the gatekeeper, and arrive at the polling place and King Harald appears among them. He says that he is still king of Norway and that there is an agreement between him and Bjorn that when Bjorn dies, Harald will be king of Kattegat and that this is his right. Prince Dyer goes to Ivar and tells him to be away when he sends soldiers to kill Oleg. Ivar goes to H. Vitserk to tell him, but H. Vitserk defends Oleg. They speculate H. Vitserk will kill him, but back off. King Oleg follows all this and watches them, and he manages to separate them. Oleg attends. Ivar says he can order H. Vitserk's death if he wants to and Ivar refuses and walks away. Keisha goes to Ivar and is surprised when she tells him that she is with Prince Dyer and that she is helping him. She says that there is a big celebration tomorrow and she will take Prince Igor and run away. On the second day of the celebration there are many people. Ivar disguises himself and takes Igor and H. Vitserk and flees in a chariot. And when they come to the assembly, they leave the gates and go to Prince Oleg. And they celebrate. In Kattegat, Harald proposes to Gunhild but she refuses, as she is in love with Bjorn. We know that Ingrid is a witch and performs a magical ritual to be the Kattegat queen. And Oba after many days at sea and the eating and drinking are about to end. They find a land and go down on it but it will be a barren land and other tells them that this is not the land he saw and that they decided to stay there because of the lack of eating and drinking. They start farming, but many of them feel that they have been deceived and that this is not a dreamland just like what happened with Floki. The land is divided so that each family can build a house and a dead whale emerges from the sea on the land of Kettle and they are all happy because they will eat after being hungry. But Kettle's nature shows and he tells them that this is my land and that anyone who approaches will kill him. And they kill each other because of the whale. And Kettle and his family are setting boundaries around the whale. Other talks to the Oba and convinces him that the land he told him about exists. And the Oba decides to take the rest of the people and walk and they actually walk and leave Kettle and his family and go to the promised land. Dyer and Ivar with the army arrive at Oleg and are surprised that Oleg's army surrenders and declares his loyalty to Dyer. Oleg is trying to convince them of peace and that they can live together in peace. But Igor is hit by an arrow, kills Oleg, and falls to the ground. Ivar bids farewell to Igor, and he and H. Vitzer go. Oba, he spends days at sea, and the food and water run out, but the rain comes. In Kattegat, 
Ingrid marries King Harold, and Gunhild decides to kill herself in order to go to Bjorn. Ivar and H. Fitzirk arrive at the Kattegat and walk among the people, and the people insult them. They reach King Harold and learn that it was Ivar who escaped from King Harold's prison, and that this is the right time to return the service. In the end people accept Ivar because he is Ragnar's son, and he decided to go to the place where Ragnar died and finish what the Vikings did not finish there. Finally he returns to England with King Alfred. He urges people to fight and tells them that they are Vikings, not sellers who buy and sell, and that they have turned into merchants, not fighters. And the Oba food and drink ended with the death of people, and the Oba became helpless and unable to help anyone not even himself. Oba hits other and says he is a liar and because of him they will all die and other says he didn't lie. And after he saw the land in front of him and could not make his voice heard, he called them and consulted them until his wife noticed him and saw the land. Other says that this is the land and that he did not lie and cry and they all rejoice. And Ivar and King Harold move to Wessex. They have lived in Wessex in peace for a long time and news comes to King Alfred that the Vikings are on their way to Wessex. Ivar arrives in Wessex and encounters Wessex soldiers who beat them up and camp them. And King Alfred knows what happened and gathers all his soldiers and camp near Ivar. He sends his wife to her family to be safe. But the king falls ill and the soldiers see him and take him to his tent. And the soldiers are frustrated because the king is ill. Alfred shaves his hair, gathers all his soldiers, and encourages them. In Kattegat, Ingrid takes advantage of the fact that Harold does not exist and there are no sons of Ragnar, and she makes a magic for Eric and he loses his sight and controls the Kattegat. And the Oba go down to the new land and have all the forests and eat and it becomes a beautiful land they cooperate to build houses for themselves. But they feel that they are not alone on this earth and that they are being watched. And they find that one of them left things and gifts for them. And they understand that those with them on this earth do not want war. And they take the gifts and put Ari's gifts in their place. And the next day they found other gifts. And they searched for them until they found them in front of them. One of them goes and breaks the arrow as a sign of peace and takes them to the chief. They speak a different language but they can communicate and live together in peace, exchange experiences, and exchange visits until the leader of the tribe says a word from the Viking language. Oba tries to find out this word and takes a place and finds a carved on the tree Ragnar's face. It's Floki. He is still alive and they talk a lot. The great battle begins. A very strong fight takes place. King Harold is dead. King Alfred is injured. Many soldiers die and everything becomes chaos. A person appears with a white spear and a stab in the ground and this is a sign of negotiations. Ivar and King Alfred appear. Ivar speaks arrogantly and gives Alfred the chess piece he took from him in the past. Of course, Ivar rejects all peaceful solutions, and they came back to fight again in many arrows and fireballs. H. Fitzirk falls and nearly dies but Ivar enters and saves him. He tells him to withdraw and that it is over and he will die here. Ivar yells at Alfred and says he is going to kill him and that he is a coward. And a soldier goes to him to kill Ivar, but he cannot. Although Ivar was defenseless, the soldiers were afraid of him. But the soldier eventually stabs him. And King Alfred stops the war because Harold and Ivar are dead and H. Fitzirk goes to his brother and embraces him. And Ivar dies. And Oba. This person knows that the tribe with them on the land has gold and goes to steal, but he sees it as the leader's son. And the Vikings killed him. Oba decides to punish him for deciding to live in peace and says he will be punished with a blood eagle. And that it would give him another chance to enter Valhalla if he didn't scream in pain. And Oba approaches him and tells him, Valhalla not you my friend and slaughter him. The sixth and final season of Vikings ends with Oba and Floki at the beach peacefully. Who do you think is better? Oba, who decided to change the habits and behavior of the people around him and think about peace, the future and agriculture. Or Ivar, who was all thinking about hate and revenge by any means. Or Bjorn, whoever thinks of strength, seeks power and authority, and is the king of all Norway. And all of them did not care about Kattegat and in the end they left the rule of Kattegat to a witch to rule it. Write your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a nice comment like you. See you in the next video.